<laughs> Hi friends, it's your old pal Papa Dale here, and we are pursuing our, continuing our series on Christ versus the culture. This episode is Follow Your Heart? No! <laughs> and this is one of literally hundreds of episodes that are planned, and for two reasons. One, to provide an educational body of content for today's Christians, and to provide a legacy body of content for those who are left behind after the rapture. The Holy Spirit can possibly direct some of them to uh, this information, and they can learn something about the Bible and Christ. Who am I? I'm Papa Dale, and I'm a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, chaplain, evangelist. I've done a lot of things in 50 plus years of service to the Lord Jesus Christ. Supported myself during most of those years with uh, being a businessman as well. Owned my own businesses, ran businesses for others, and so forth. Now, it's important that you understand a little bit about uh, folks who say they're going to teach you about the Bible, which is why I've made a video about myself that tells you a little bit about my educational background and church service and so forth. Uh, and the reason that it's important is because the Bible says that in the end times, there will be a lot of false teachers that arise. So two ways you can determine whether someone is a false teacher. You can kind of get an idea by knowing something about uh, a person. But the main thing is, is to compare their teaching to what the Bible teaches. If it's congruent, if it's consistent to what the Bible teaches, then it's possible that it's good information and you should take it under consideration. But let's move on right now to the lesson notes. Follow your heart? No! <laughs> this is a false assertion that God created you with the desires and the proclivities that come out of your heart. That they are the authentic you is a lie. They are the sinful, self-elevating, pleasure-seeking pull of a sin-stained heart. The reality is hidden to you. Now, God created Adam in perfection. The Bible says, quote, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Genesis 1.31 But then Adam made himself congenitally sick by rebellion. Quote, And Eve did disobey and eat, and gave also unto her husband Adam with her, and he did disobey and eat. Genesis 3, 6. And then Adam propagated congenitally sick children. Quote, Adam begat a son in his own likeness and after his image. Genesis 5, 3. A lot of people say that human beings today are made in the image of God. We're all made in the image of God. And so, because we're all made in the image of God, everybody's opinion has equal value, and everybody's life has equal value. Well, there's only some truth to that. We are all made in the image of God, but it is a sin-stained image, because our father, Adam, stained his own image of God with sin and passed it on. So this is what Adam created. Quote, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, so much so that it is unknowable. Jeremiah 17, 9. This is your heart, and this is my heart. It is sin-stained, wicked, self-seeking, tends to want to lift our own self up and display our own ego and proclaim our own goodness. That's what every one of us tend to want to do. And until and unless we are born again and 
and God himself changes that stony, sin-stained heart into a heart of flesh, that's what we are. And we don't even know it, and we don't even fight against it. But once God touches us, then we do know it, and then we do fight against it and seek to follow him. The pull to ungodly satisfactions of sin-stained human desires, like some examples, gluttony, selfish wealth, unmarried sex, same-sex attraction. These are all perversions of God-given urgings to hunger, self-preservation, and relationship. But they are perversions. And they, the, the perverted nature of this just cannot be known by you. This must be revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. He's the only one who can. Quote, But the Bible who isn't a believer, excuse me, quote, But the man who isn't a believer can't understand and can't accept these foolish thoughts from God, which the Holy Spirit teaches us. They seem unbelievable. They sound foolish to him because only those who have the Holy Spirit within them can understand what the Holy Spirit means. Others just can't take it in. 1 Corinthians 2.14 Human rational ability is also sin-stained. You try to think your way out of it, you can't do it. This makes every conclusion that man has questionable and necessitates comparison with the truth, the word of God, with the giver of truth, the Holy Spirit. This can only be known by the illumination of the Holy Spirit himself and self-judgment against the scripture. It can only be received by the humble heart of the sincere seeker. Quote, and ye shall seek me, and ye shall find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29.13 Only when the student is ready does the teacher appear. Do not follow your heart. Quote, there is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14.12 We have to rely on the leading of the Holy Spirit and rely on the truth found in the Word of God in order for us to be able to have any semblance of understanding, any glimpse of what real truth is, of what true reality is. You see, God lives in a totally different dimensional plane than we live. He lives in the metaphysical world. And that's also where truth lies. Because Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 14, 6. He is the truth. And unless you have the Holy Spirit leading you to Christ and to the truth, you don't have the truth. John 6, 44 says, no man can come to me, Jesus speaking now, no man can come to me except the Father by the Holy Spirit, which has sent me, draw him. And so you don't have the truth because you aren't born again. You don't have the capacity 
to understand the truth. It's like a radio frequency coming in, but you don't have the receiver to understand it. It's just garbled. But once the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your heart and gives you a new heart, now you have the receiver to hear what the Spirit is trying to tell you and teach you about Jesus, about the Scripture. That's when you can learn about the truth. So, my friends, do not follow your heart. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14, 12. So that's all I got to say about that. Do not follow your heart. Man, you can be really messed up. You can be really deceived if you, if you don't take this advice. If you just decide, oh, well, I'm going to follow my heart anyway. And that very attitude is itself sinful rebellion. So you don't want to be caught up in that. So those are my comments. If you have comments, questions, or prayer requests, you can leave them in the comments section below. Or if the comments are lengthy and argumentative, then you want to switch over to my Facebook page. The link to that is below as well. Now, the lesson notes and all the Bible verses that I've quoted are uh, in the lesson notes. And there is a link for you to reach out to those as well. So, uh, I do plan to make more videos if the rapture doesn't come and take me away, or if death doesn't come and end my life here and my spirit goes to be with the Lord Jesus. I really don't care which. I live to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, whether it's here in the flesh or whether I go home and be with him. It's okay, either way. But, What's important for you to know <laughs> is that I plan to make another video if the Lord lets me stay and do so. But if not, that's fine. But if so, there will be another video. And until then, this is your old pal, Papa Dale, signing off and saying, until the next video and I see you again, I will be praying for you that you will be well and be blessed. And that's two thumbs up! <laughs>